it it resounds in my testimony too. And um, you know, whenever I was in college, I was coming home late, and uh, a deer jumped out in front of my vehicle. And you know, I was 17 years old when this happened, so I didn't know what to do. Well, you know, going I going pretty fast. I, I was I was doing 55, 60. I was doing the speed limit, uh -huh. but uh, you know, this road is just pitch black. You know, we live in darn near the middle of nowhere, you know, I was coming home and just the roads weren't lit. So you so didn't even see the deer at all? I didn't even see it, and I and I just, just split second reaction, I swerved to miss the deer and I, I missed it, and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm okay, and as I was coming back on the road, our roads, there's like, probably like a three or four inch separation between the, the gravel shoulder and the uh, blacktop, mm -hmm. and what happened was it caught my tire, and literally like a tire machine, it just spun it off and just pulled it off the rim. And as it did that, like, my car just rolled on the driver's side on top of the, the driver's side ceiling or the roof and just slid down the road. And then it finally flipped back over on the side. Mm. But I just remember as soon as that tire, that tire blew out and I flipped, all I did was I just closed my eyes and I said, oh, God. Like, I just cried out to God. It was like instant. My, my body just, like, cried out to God. And I didn't even think about it. It was just like a reaction. But uh, I, I got hit in the head really bad. It completely, like, caved in the driver's side of my roof and uh when i came to i was like i looked around there's just there's just blood everywhere you know mm. and it, it just i began to panic honestly that was my first reaction i just began to like literally scream and just you thought panic. you were dying and i was like i'm i thought i was dead honestly i really did uh for for a while and then i i began to like come to and then my head just started hurting like so bad because you know that driver's side caved in on me but my my rearview mirror was hanging and just dangling in front of me and i grabbed it and I was trying to look at myself to see why I was hurting, and my ear was just completely gone. It was just, it was just gone. Oh, wow. And my head was hurting, like, really back here, like, so bad. And I, I felt it, and, like, all my hair was gone, too. Like, and I was like, oh, God, what has happened? You know, I was like, I'm going to die. You know, I have such a bad head injury. Mm. But uh, I was working at the hospital. I, I worked at a fitness center for a long time, and, uh, you know, one of the requirements was to be CPR and first aid certified to be there in case anybody had any issues. And uh, I remembered I was like, I have to get on this wound no matter how bad this is going to hurt to get this bleeding to stop you know because i was there was just literally blood everywhere and i had i mean i've got just well, that's one little scar right there but mm. i had a shard of glass in my arm and everything like that oh, and i was just bleeding everywhere and i was panicking and i finally came to and i began to search and like all my stuff was scattered just down the road mm. but uh i found my gym bag i didn't work out that night i usually work out before i lock the gym and I grabbed my shirt and I literally just tied it around my head and just tied the sleeves together. And I went to go get my phone and I had my phone in my shirt pocket. But you know, when you kind of flip a vehicle, your your phone's gone. And it was the, I never, I don't think I ever found it. But uh, I just began to look around. I was like, what am I gonna do? You know? And uh, I looked off in the distance and down the road there was uh, a light. I just saw a light, like you know, like a, just a telephone pole with a light on it. And there was a gas station down the road that had been closed for the night because this was like, it was like midnight when I was coming home. I was really late. And uh, I just looked at it and I was like, I guess if I'm, I can either sit here and I can panic and I can die or I can go to this, uh, mm. to this, hou this house. And I was looking around and uh, as I was trying to get my stuff and go back, I stepped in the mud and I lost one of my shoes too. And it came up to about my knee right there and I, Oh, wow. Fell in the mud and I lost my shoe. And I, it's one of those events, you know, where people say, "Could it get any worse?" And it starts raining, kind of thing. <laughs> That's what happened. I was like, I was like, "Could this event get any worse?" And I lost my shoe, you know. Wow. <laughs> but I just began to walk, and you know, my soul's desire. Like, you know, I've been going to this church, and they've been doing a lot of contemporary worship, and it's just totally changed my life. And that's when mm -hmm. I began, you know, being first introduced to like Jesus culture and like Third Day and Chris Tomlin and things like that. Yeah. And. uh I just began walking, and, like, I just, for some reason, my soul just started praising God, like, through this whole, like, as I'm, like, limping without a shoe, you know, you kind of, like, feel like you're walking not kinda level. like Job did. Yeah, like, I uh, felt like, uh, in an instant, everything was just, just changed, like, it was just gone, and I just began walking, and I was just like, how great is our God, and I just kept singing that song over and over as I just walked for a half a mile, and I just got to this wow. station, I began beating on these doors, and Honestly, I probably terrified some people because, mm. like, I was covered in blood, and I probably had, like, I was beating on doors, and there's probably, like, blood hand marks all over these doors, and these people woke up and probably, like, really, really freaked out. But uh, an older couple answered the door, and they were really skeptical. You know, you have a guy beating on your door at 
near midnight saying you've been in a car accident please help me you know i'd be a little skeptical too but they eventually you know called 911 for me and they they let me in and i sat down and uh I, I gave them the number to call my parents and dad just got there right away but i remember going to the hospital and this is one of those really awesome moments that god began to use throughout this was uh when I was in there, my head was completely scalped, and the doctor pulled my parents aside, and they were like, you know, my hair follicles were so damaged, there's no way my hair would grow back. Mm. And the, this was like one of the first things that I can remember that God just began to just work through this event was my mom just stood up and said, in the name of Jesus, my son's hair will grow back. And, you know, as you can see, my hair is just Amen. It's here today. Amen. You know, that's a testament on its own right there. But the the main thing was with my ear that it was ripped off, and... uh. Did they find your ear? Did they they didn't. Find no, they never found it, actually. Um, with, They said there was, like, you know, the, the trauma surgeon couldn't do anything. You know, he's like, you know, I can attempt it, but there's people in, in another hospital that can, there's specialists that can take care of it. Mm -hmm. And they called him, and they were like, you know, we've got this guy here. And he was like, send him up here right away. You know, it's just God's favor on me already. And they got me there. And this is, like, the most profound thing about it was I was sitting there, and they were working on my ear, and my mom and my dad were sitting to my left, and they were, you know, they were just sitting there, and they were being, like, awesome and just, you know, keeping their cool, for, mm -hmm. you know, for my sake. But I saw angels standing behind them. Oh, wow. And when I saw them, they were just beings of just pure light. They were just, they looked, they had the shape of a, a human being, but they were just pure light, like a reverse silhouette is what I tell people, you know, to give them the illustration. And I saw a hand, like, on my shoulder, and I saw one lean down, and he said, it's going to be okay. This is going to be your testimony. Like, this is going to be your testimony. And throughout everything, there's been so many events that uh just been able to God that can move. And I could go on and on and on about that. But one of my main things is this this Bible that I have is, uh, is my absolute favorite Bible in the world. My parents bought this for me when I uh, graduated high school as a president. And uh, it was in my rec with me. It was on my dashboard. Wow. And... Uh, when my dad brought it to me, it was covered with mud and blood and had, like, pieces of glass on it. And I just began to cry when I saw it because I was like, this thing is precious to me. You know, I love this. I've ministered to people with this. This has been with me through everything. And my dad looked at it, and he was like, I'm going to take care of it. And, you know, he didn't tell me he was going to do it, but he literally took and cleaned the cover off and rubbed oil into it. And he went through every one of these Bible pages. And, you know, Bible pages are just incredibly incredibly thin and delicate and he began to clean it off and take care of it and what he told me was that it had his son's blood on it and it was precious to him and you know this bible today it still has my it had my blood stains on the pages and things but that's the same way that god views us honestly he uh he'll come to us and he can't change you overnight but he works with you delicately and through you and he begins to clean you off page by page and he be, and he will not let you be thrown away because Jesus' blood is on you, and God says that is precious to me, and you will not be thrown out for that. You know. Well, amen. And it's just an amazing thing. Wow, that's powerful <laughs> what God has done in your life, man. And I just know God is going to use you in a amen. tremendous way to share your testimony and to use the gifts that God has given you. It's truly been an honor to have you on Reviving you so Your Day. Much. It has truly been a wonderful. It's been an honor to be here. It has just touched my heart.